Hey, so if you saw my last video, again this is a continuation of the last video on communicable diseases, and this time we're focusing on the little buggers that are protests. But again, just to refresh quick in case you didn't see the last video, communicable diseases are caused by pathogens, and a pathogen is a microorganism that causes a disease. There are four main types of pathogen, so we've got viruses, bacteria, fungi, and protists. Protists, along with plants, animals, and fungi, are classified as eukaryotes. So they have a membrane-bound nucleus and a number of membrane-bound organelles, unlike the cells of prokaryotes. But protists exhibit more structural and functional diversity than any other group of eukaryotes, and they are an organism that is not considered an animal, plant, or fungus. Protists are also more nutritionally diverse than other eukaryote groups, so they can get their energy from various sources. Some protists are photoautotrophs and contain chloroplasts, so that means that they get their energy from the sun like plants. Some are heterotrophs, so that means that they're absorbing organic molecules or ingesting larger food particles. So just like us, some protists cannot um, manufacture their own food and instead obtain energy by taking in organic substances. And then there are others called mixotrophs, which combine photosynthesis and heterotrophic nutrition. So protists are super varied and have been separated into five supergroups to help things along. So we've got Excavata, Chromoviolata, Rosaria, Archiplastida, and Uniconta. Excavata include parasites such as Giardia, which can infect people when they drink water contaminated with containing the cysts of the parasite. They're actually quite cute, but they will give you violent diarrhea. Um, Chromal violates include some of the most important photosynthetic organisms on Earth and include the brown algae that form underwater kelp forests, as well as important pathogens, semi-important pathogens, I guess, such as plasmodium, which causes malaria. And we've got phytophora, that's how you say it, which causes a potato famine in Ireland. And then we've got Archiplastida, which includes red algae and green algae, along with land plants. Rosaria consists of species of amoebas, most of which have Posedopodia that are thread-like in shape. Uniconta also include amoebas that have lobe or tube-shaped Posedopodia. So we're going to go back to the supergroup Chromoviolates and take Plasmodium, the parasite that causes malaria, which lives in both mosquitoes and humans. The search for malarial vaccines has been hampered by the fact that plasmodium lives mainly inside cells, hidden from the host's immune system. And plasmodium continually changes its surface proteins, just to be a little shit. So this is how it all goes down, you better take note. So when an infected mosquito bites a person, they inject plasmodium sporozoites in its saliva into the person. The sporozoites then enter the person's liver cells. After several days, the sporozoites undergo multiple divisions and become merozoites which then go on to penetrate red blood cells. The merozoites then divide inside the red blood cells at intervals of 48 or 72 hours, depending on the species. Large numbers of merozoites break out of the blood cells, causing periodic chills and fever. Some of the merozoites infect other red blood cells and some form gametocytes. At this point, another mosquito can bite the infected person and they can pick up the plasmodium gametocytes along with blood. So, Gametes then form from gametocytes. Each male gametocyte produces several male gametes. Fertilization occurs in the mosquito's digestive tract and a zygote forms. An oocyst develops from the zygote in the wall of the mosquito's gut. The oocyst then releases thousands of sporozoites which migrate to the mosquito's salivary gland and then the cycle of infection continues. So overall, Protists are a diverse collection of organisms and are generally just super interesting to read about. I mean, there is so much to learn about them. And if you find that you absolutely must share all your newfound knowledge on protists with the whole wide world, then why not make a dedicated website on them? And with Squarespace, you could do this so easily as they provide really nice templates that are created by world-class designers and you have the ability to customize the look, feel, the settings and so much more with just a few clicks. So go check out Squarespace by going to squarespace.com forward slash science with Katie for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code science with Katie to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. If anyone actually makes a website on Protus, I really, really want to see it. So let me know in the comments if you do. Thanks for watching. Bye.